Good afternoon. Well, after、uh, almost two days、uh, reports, let's talk about something big. <laughs> let's talk some、uh, big numbers, right? I think you get tired of、uh, all these、uh, detail today. What we'll be doing in this? Because when I talk about the future, when I talk about the big numbers, everybody's scared in the company. They say, "No, no, 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 no more big numbers." But I've been keeping on doing for 18 years, and I think、uh, the day, you know, as long as I'm alive, I'm always talking about the future. In the past five years, I tried to learn to be a chairman, and I think as a chairman of the company, I promised the, the、uh, Daniel and Joe. That I will focus on three issues. First, I, I try to making sure that this company is a vision-driven strategy company. It's a vision-driven company. I hate that Alibaba IPO and every day we worry about next quarter, the quarter after next, and this is no good. This is I hate about that. I、uh, I'm happy to be on the board,、uh, joined some board many years ago. Some big multinational companies are joined there. And、uh, when they make decisions, they 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 hate, they worry about make decision for the future. Everybody only care for next quarter, and they buy company, merge company just for next quarter. So I hate that. So I say, the day when we IPO, we have to be making sure that this company in next 84 years should always be a vision driven company. And the second is as a chairman, I should making sure. The company should have a healthy culture and great people. So this is the second job as a chairman I should have. And the third, before I retire as a chairman, I retired the CEO five years ago. Before I retired the chairman of the CEO, I try my best to build a healthy ecosystem for this company to survive. So these are the three jobs that I took. As the chairman, and I learned how to do that job better. And when I talked to the investors, I said that Joe was scared, and and all the team of financial team say scared, because I say I'm not scared. I remember that 18 years ago, Joe and I went to Silicon Valley. We talked to over 30 venture capitalists. We said we want to be one of the top internet companies in the world. And the VCs, all the venture capitalists were scared. They all said, "No, forget about it." So we did not raise any money. The first the trip, Joe and I went. And since then, I did not write any business plan. <laughs> and then,、um, well, it was brief at that time. Alibaba.com ranking like a, a couple of hundred million names behind. So we want to be number top ten sites. Everybody thought we were crazy. The second time I remember, a、uh, fifteen year, it's like、uh, year two thousand three when we just break even. We start to compete with eBay. Joe and I went to、uh, San Francisco. Oh no, Los Angeles. And I talked to many big PEs. And when I talk about, we will move to C to C. We will go to the.、Uh, Consumer market will compete with eBay. The investors at that time were also scared. No, no, no! You have no chance to win eBay because C to C market in China has no chance. eBay taken already taken 90 percent of the market share. And three years ago, when I when we listed in New York, and I say we will raise a little bit money, 20 billion dollars, people thought it was a joke. But now I think we need more money. More money for the future, and I think compared to the future, Alibaba is still a baby. If you say in the past 18 years we were amazing, I think we were amazing. We were so lucky. We we're the one of the luckiest country company in the world. We are in a wonderful industry, internet, and we are in a wonderful country like China. We have, we got、uh, so many supports from our colleagues and great team and all the all the things. So we're lucky. But this company would love will the vision is to last 102 years. So we have another 84 years to go. And、uh, people say, "Wow, 102 years! It's a great number." But we take it really seriously. As me, founder and chairman, I really take this thing. Very seriously, 
So every plan, every year on the strategy meeting, we'll review what we're going to do next 10 years. What the 10 years? Every, every project, every big investment we do, we think about 10 years later. We think about five years later. So we have a three-year plan, five-year plan, and 10 years plan. Almost every year we review. So without that, if you only if you talk about 100, 102 years, but never care about five-year plan or 10-year plan, you really do not believe what you're talking about. And I'm, I want to tell all the investors, we are very serious about 102-year vision that we have another 84 years to go. So compared to the future, you know, our, our market cap, of course, I think I'm happy about that, but don't compare it to the others. If you compare it to Amazon, I'm not happy about that. <laughs> but if you compare it to the future, we are still a small company, a very young company. At 18 years old, we are growing to that size, but we're still a baby thinking inside. So what we want to do in the future, we want to be the 21st century, a globalized company. And I would say, the first technology revolution had a uh, business model called a factory. The second technology revolution called, uh, there's a business model called company. So what will be the data time, the internet time in the 21st century? What be the best business model for this century? We think about is something called like a platform business. So we are lucky. 15 years ago, of, or, or we start to move our company from a normal like a website to a platform-like. And I think the other thing is that uh, whether you're a big company or a great company, not depends on what kind of opportunity you catch. Most of the companies in China, they're always waiting for opportunity. If there's a good opportunity, they catch it, they become a good company. When they, cannot, they, when they miss some opportunities, they're gone. In China, a couple of years ago, there was a very popular saying that uh, uh, if you have a pig, right? If you are if you're lucky you happen to be on the, uh, the, 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 you know, the, uh, on the winged some draw, you will fly, a pig will fly. But if the wing goes, the pig will die. So I think that it's not about what kind of opportunities you grasp, it's about what kind of value you create for the future, what kind of problems you solve for the world. The big problem you, you solve the, for the world, the big company will be. The great problem you solve the world, for the world, the great company you will be. So Alibaba think about one thing, that what kind of problems we can solve for the world in the next 10, 20 years. If we, are able, we, we can figure out the problem in 10, 20 years, what are the problems? Then we start to prepare now, then we'll be big. So we think we are a company in Hangzhou, we are not a company in New York, we're not a company in Silicon Valley, we're not a company in Beijing, Shanghai, we're a company in Hangzhou. As a Hangzhou company, the way we compete with the others is that how we judge for the future. You know, that's the competition we have. So we believe the future like this, and we spend all the resources going that. And we believe this will be the world problem. If we can solve that problem, we'll be great. That's the way we think about how we lead our future. So today, e-commerce, cloud computing, and you know, whatever business we have, all designed it but 10 years ago, 15 years ago. So people say, you're great today. No, I think we're not great today. We were great 10 years ago. 10 years ago, we believe this thing will happen. 15 years ago, we believe this thing will happen. Eight years ago, we believe cloud computing, big data will come. So we start to make decisions 18, 8, 15, and 10 years ago. And then we put all the resources, all the talents, everything just to focus on. So I said to many um, uh, uh, the entrepreneurs, if, if there are nine rabbits on the ground, if you want to catch one rab rabbit, you should not change the rabbit, you should change yourself, just stick to one rabbit. That's the way to do it. So we had our vision 10, 15 years ago. We know this is where we want to go, and we do anything, change ourselves to be sure that we catch that rabbit. 
So <clears throat> we think globalization, anti-globalization, anti-trade, and trade protection is a problem. It's going to be a big problem in the future. So how we can help globalize? We think globalization is a great thing. And how, but you know, it's only like 20, 30 years. In the past 20, 30 years, globalization helped a lot of developed countries, helped a lot of big companies. So in the past 30 years, globalization, global trade was controlled by 60,000 big companies, and which make rich company richer, big company bigger, and small companies, small countries, SMEs, all in trouble. And the young people didn't have a chance. So we think about if we can make globalization, international trade, cross-border trade more inclusive, making sure every small business has the chance, making sure every young people has the chance, that we can solve a lot of problems. People worry about the job, jobs because the new technology come will take away a lot of jobs. But, I, but we think if we can make globalization more inclusive, then we can create more jobs. If a, if a small business, you can only sell your products to your neighbors in your county. What if you can sell products across the ocean, across the country to the others? That might be a great solution for the job creation and a great solution for today's problems. So that is why we've been focused, we believe that we can do something for globalized trade, for globalization. We were helping not 60,000 big companies. We can help 6 million or 16, 60 million small business that they can sell and buy cross board. This is what we want to do. And the second thing is that the world economy is never be sustainable. How can we make our technology to enable the global trade, global business to be more sustainable? And meanwhile, how we can make business people and people of the next generation happy and healthier. So these are the three values, three problems that we want to solve. The world is not globalization. People don't like it. But we think we should make it inclusive. We should make global business more sustainable. We should make the people in the future are more happy and healthier. So these are three problems, and these are three values we want to create. So in this way, that we definitely want to be a, globe, a company that can help globalization. So e-commerce will be the best solution. And if you want to do e-commerce, you definitely have a good technology, good people, people with good vision. Five years ago, when Alibaba, when the Taobao Timo GNV just crossed 170 billion US dollars GNV, which is one trillion IMB, I had a crazy idea. I say, what if we can make uh, a one trillion US dollars by the 20 year anniversary of Alibaba? That is year 2019, because we were born in 1999. So we said year 2019, today we call year 2020 physical year, right? We should meet the uh, 1 trillion US dollars. Everybody will say, yes, why not? But I hate the exchange rate. We never put that in the account. So at that time, it's like, a, you know, $1 is like a 6 IMB, but now like $1 close to 7 so we, we need to uh, have, we have uh, like uh, one trillion IMB gap, which is not easy. But go, I'm happy about uh, Daniel said, target is a target, KPI is a KPI, let's do it. If we can, if, if we do in a normal way, we will never meet it. So the next three years, our small target is go across one trillion US dollars. One trillion US dollars Nobody, no company in the whole world in the last 100 years, people can imagine any company can do it. We have to do in a very innovative way. We have to do, make it happen. But if we cannot make it happen, we'll be in trouble. The trouble is that we got a big goal that is in year 2036, we will be a company that can serve 2 billion populations 
two billion consumers. We want to be a company that can create a hundred million jobs for the world. We want to be a company that can support 10 million profitable business on the Alibaba platform. So what is that? If a company can serve two billion consumers, that is one third of the total population of the world. If the company can create a hundred million jobs, this is probably bigger than any government, most of government can do. And if your company can support 10 million profitable business on its platform, this is called economy. Today, Alibaba's GMV, it's just e -com, I mean, it's a commerce rise. Alibaba GMV is ranking 22nd economy of the world. We are just behind Argentina, right? But I think when we cross one trillion US dollars, we are sort of ranking uh, 17 or 16. But in year 2036, if we can make a 2 billion and 100 million and, and, and 10 million, we will be ranking number five economy of the world. What does number five mean? Number one, I don't know China or USA. If just say USA, China, Europe, maybe Japan, and us. <laughs> well, people say this is too big. It costs nothing to imagine, right? <laughs> if you even do not dare to vision it, if you do not think about it. So 18 years ago, when 18 people in my apartment we all together, less than 50,000 US dollars. We start to think that one day we will be the top 10 business, I mean, website of the world. We were brave at that time. Today, we have 55,000 people. We have a lot of money. We have a lot of talents, technology, data. We have a lot of uh, believers, of users, or we have uh, half a billion people already uh, using our services. Why not uh, think about a big? Of course, we do not own that economy. The fifth largest economy we envision, we believe if Alibaba cannot do it, the other people will do it. So if we can work with other people, make this, this global new economy, it's based on internet. Using this, e this economy, we were helping global buy, global sell, global pay, global logistic, and global travel. It, today, many cities in China, you don't need to do anything. It's just a mobile phone. You can travel all around the world. We believe in a couple of years, when you have a passport and mobile phone, you can travel all around the world. And five years later, you don't need a passport, maybe. Just a mobile phone or just your face recognition travel around the world based on your data. So this thing could happen. You have, we have to open our mind and think about it. So <clears throat> this is what we want to do, that we will globalize the business. We will make globalization more inclusive. We will make everybody, if you have a mobile phone, at that time, whether it's a mobile phone or not, if you have a, a, like a gadget, like a mobile phone, you can global buy anything you want. Because we hope, as a Tanya CEO must have told you, that in next eight years, because this goal was put two, two years ago, anywhere in China, you want the, you want to uh, uh, buy things online, within 24 hours, you will receive it. Anywhere in the world, if you order online, you will receive a product within 72 hours. I met a, a girl in Russia a few weeks ago, and she said, well, wow, AliExpress was great. I said, why is it great? She said, the speed was fantastic. I said, what do you mean by fantastic? She said, only nine days I received my products. Remember, like two years ago, it took almost two months and a half for a Russian girl to receive a product from China to Russia through AliExpress. Nine days to, for them is like a rocket. 
But we will make it happen anywhere in the world. For Tanya, I told the Tanya, the vision, one of the vision for Tanya is 24 hours anywhere in China. So Beijing faster, Shanghai faster, Guangzhou fast, to my standard, that's not, does not account. Tibet fast, Mongolia fast, Yunnan fast, Guizhou fast, that is called the speed. So we have to make a network first. When network is invested, is work, the network effect comes, the speed is going uh, is going to be speed up. So I would say globally, we will build up a logistic network that within 72 hours, anywhere you order. So there's no big difference between you order things here from Mongolia, you order things from here to Argentina. 72 hours, that's so we have using technology, have to be creative, have to be connecting all the logistics and warehouses, all the companies, bring business to them, let them join the network. So this is something that we want to do. And we want any small business, they can go across the board. You know, today, most of the free trade zones of any countries, the free trade zone are designed for big companies. We are encouraging every government to build their free trade zone for small business. The big companies can go across the custom offices within 24 hours for small business, maybe seven weeks. So how we can encourage government, how we can encourage the policymakers, make globalization more inclusive, supporting millions and millions of small business can buy and sell across the board. This is called EWTP, not EWTO. EWTO is organization, very complicated. Platform is something we can work on. And also payment, I think Eric has told you about, we are building up a network that we were making sure every small business, every individual in next 10, 20 years, the financial should be inclusive. And we believe tech thing, not the FinTech. Right. FinTech is a financial institute try to improve their power. Uh, tech thing is to enable everybody to be able to reach the financing. We are technology companies to making sure that everybody is equal. Everybody should be able to reach the money they want. Not, not those people don't need the money, money come. They don't need the money, you never receive it. So this is something we want to bring to the world. And I've been working very hard, shareholders. I've been really working hard. Last year, I fly in the air 870 hours, or 876 hours. And traveling and meeting, visiting 40 countries, and seeing all the prime minister, minister like a diplomatic uh, a minister. I'm happy that I enjoy doing that. I got a lot of response from those countries, and Malaysia as the first country has already started the EWTP, the, the testing country. And we will, we will try to make this thing more and more popular, and we will try, uh, we are, I'm sure that more and more young people, women, small business, government officers will join us. So this is something that I'm excited about. If we really can make the, uh, the fifth largest economy, we need 2 billion population. As the 2 billion population, China will probably get 800 million something. We need 1.2 billion people from outside China. This is why we go Southeast Asia, one road, one belt. And imagine the other thing, which you think about. President Xi Jinping announced in Davos meeting, next five years, China is going to import 8 trillion US dollars. This one road, one belt conference just happened last month. The China government again say in next five years, China will import one, uh, eight trillion US dollars. Guys, what does eight trillion US dollars mean? 16 Walmart Global. Then China is changing very fast from exporting country to import countries. So this $8 trillion means a lot to China, means a lot to the world, of course, means a lot to a country, a company like Alibaba. 
because e-commerce probably will be the solution. If you go to Guangzhou Fair or Las Vegas Fair to sell $8 trillion, it's impossible. So let's think about the other. So globalization, absolutely, we are excited. Absolutely, it's a huge opportunity. And to reach, go across $1 trillion US dollars. And next to three years, we need a lot of money from GME from these countries. So that's why Lazada, AliExpress, all going to move very fast. The second opportunity, I would say, is China opportunity. China today have uh, more than 300 million middle class. They are middle class, but the spending capability, spending uh, uh, you know, capability is very low. So China is going to reach with the today's growth in five to six years, we're going to have 500 million middle class. That means almost close to two American population. And this is going to be a huge change for this economy. And China today is shifting from investment economy, export economy to domestic consumption. Domestic consumption, definitely today e-commerce will take a huge role inside that. And we think, think that consumption upgrading, importing is the key. So we're gonna do a lot on that. And China, the other thing is which I told last year that a lot of people did not agree. I say in next 20 years, next 10 years, China is going to phasing five new, new retail, new manufacturing, new financing, new technology, and new energy. The new retail, I think you have heard about Daniel yesterday talk about in the detail. The essence of new retail is from it's like shifting from selling products to people to serving the people, but selling to services. So new retail is going to be big. And the other is new manufacturing. I heard people ask about the questions about new manufacturing. The way we, eight years ago, cloud computing and big data, eight years ago, we make decision. That because we know that in the future, retail based on data, Manufacturing is best data. So three, in the past three years, this company, our company discussed a lot, much more than most of people in the world about IoT. We believe IoT. We think IoT is the future, is the solution of solving the manufacturing upgrading problem of China. Today, a lot of people in America talk about uh, AI, uh, big data, especially AI. It sounds like if you do not talk about uh, AI, you are in trouble. <laughs> Honestly, we never talk about uh, AI in the company. I hate people talk about uh, AI in the company. AI normally discussed by those com company without data. AI is normally talked by, by the academic professors. We've been using that for a long, long time. I remember when our first CEO of, uh, of uh, Alipay, you know, the Alipay transaction is big, a lot of thieves coming. So in order to, because if we, like Alipay today's transactions amount, we need at least 2,000 policemen, maybe 20,000 policemen. You cannot catch all the bad guys because when you have a, such a large a transaction, all the bad guys come. So we use machine learnings. We hide over, I think in our company, more than 200 policemen joined us. They are all the expert of criminal behaviors. So we teach computers to learn how to catch criminals. If you are a thief, a great thief can, can figure out 10 ways of stealing money. This is a great thief. Normally, a thief can only figure out two or three ways. <laughs> but computer can learn 20,000 or 2 million ways. So when the thief will think he is so smart with the idea, with the machine will say, I have seen this 100 times. So I think. 
doing good things. To me, AI doing good things for the other people. Normally irrational. I just love you. I like you. I do things without thinking. All the bad guys do bad things with logic. If you have a logic, AI can do better job than you are. <laughs> so, to my understanding, machine learning and artificial intelligence is the best way to arrest bad guys. We've been doing that on the e-commerce and AliPay for many years, and we never call it AI. And I think that uh, the IoT. Is going to be big because in the past years, machine all drink electricity. Next 20 years, machine will drink data. In the past 20 years, we make people like a like a machine, and next 20 years, we will make machine like a people. So this is going to be big. The China 2025 and the the, the Germany 4.0. This all moving to the data. And new financing, new financing. I think AliPay has already, Ali Enter Financing already told about that. We are tech thing. We are not the fintech. Fintech is still old financing. Fintech is tried, still try to control 2080. The 2080 is a special take for China. The big banks, they they serve 20 percent of the big companies. And they made 80% profit. For us, we want to do 80/20. We want to serve 80% of the small business, 80% of the consumers that never got a chance, got a chance to reach the financing. We only we are happy about 20% profit. Joe, is that right? 20% is good enough to me. And also the new technology. We are moving faster on cloud computing. We are moving faster on the uh, mobile technology. We also invest on the operating systems, and we are having a lot of, you know, big vision. They're trying to be sure that Alibaba is a real high tech company. I told the team, the comp real high, high company, Alibaba, should set a you know, like a model is Google. People say, ah, uh, you know. Robin is engineer. Mark uh, Pony is an uh, engineer. Uh, Jack Ma is a sales is a teacher. <laughs> oh, is a salesman. No, I'm not a salesman. I'm an evangelist. <laughs> and I want to say is that evangelists believe in the future. Engineers believe in technology, and I believe technology is for the future. I may not be a good engineer. I may not be a good engineer. I'm not, actually, I'm not an engineer, but I respect engineers than most of the engineers. I respect them. I listen to them. I admire them. But we communicate better. I tell, this is something, if you do in that way, you can solve a lot of problems. If you do this way, you can solve the engineer problems. And they love that. I work very well with all the engineers. One of the examples we did is Ali Cloud Computing. Dr. Wang Jie and I working perfectly. And, and most of engineers hate cloud computing 80 years ago because they think this thing does not work. And I believe this thing work. And I never bargain with engineers how to make things happening. But I tell this is the direction supposed to be. So we're lucky, and I uh, I want to say we should build technology that is great for the future. We should build technology that solve the problem. Alibaba is not the company that oh there's some money there, so we should go there. Oh there is opportunity there, we go there. We grow from. Taobao, why we go Alipay? Because if we do not have Alipay, we will collapse. So we do the Alipay. When we have Taobao and Alipay, we say, if we do not have tight logistics, we will collapse, so we do logistics. So we say, now if we do not have the cloud computing, all the traffic will make us collapse. 
So when we do all these things, we find out we are not happy. So if we're not happy, nobody will be happy. So how can we make people happy? Then entertainment might be happy. So we do things because customer need, not because this is something that will make money. Today, the more things we do, the more human nature we understand. The more things we work, we partner with others, we know our problem, our partner's problem, our customer's problem. So we want to be the, custom, the company that solves the customer's problem. So with that much opportunities in China, the five news, the grow, fast growing China economy, and China will be is the second largest economy, might be the first largest economy in next whatever years. Do you think China should have a few companies that are the top tier of the world. So people say, oh, Alibaba is a Chinese company. No, yeah, we are. We are born in China, but we grow for 21st century. We grow for the world. We are born in China, but we made this company for the global. So we having a great plan for globalization. In our company, Every year, we will have at least four meetings among the 300 senior management of Alibaba. We say two in Chinese, two in English. If you cannot understand, I'm sorry, go back to learn English. So most of the, we will see more and more international people, the, the colleagues here, we will send all the Chinese, uh, the most of the Chinese, uh, the, the, the colleagues go outside to support. So. As the second largest economy, we think China will have companies like a Walmart, Microsoft, IBM, Google, Apple that influenced the world in the past years. In the last century, there are so many American companies that influence the world and, and be the number one. So we think China may have the chance to have a couple of them, and Alibaba hopefully will be the top, the real top 10 of the world. So what we have, we have, I think you see all the things what we have today, but we think we have our people, we have culture, and the very important, the other assets we have is we have the data. If you look at the world today, I don't know which country, or which company in the world that has such rich data than us have. People say, oh, you're everywhere. We are economy. You invest anywhere. You have, you have no logic. We have a logic. You don't have a logic for economy. Because we have an economy logic. You only have to think about it. People say, oh, you are, you are Amazon. No, we are not Amazon. Amazon is Amazon. Alibaba is economy. We are not a Google. Of course, we have Amazon business. We have Google business. We have a fiscal business. We have most of business you can see because we are economy. And the economy to support this economic growth traditionally is the soil water, the land, the water, and the, and the, and the environment. For our virtual economy, the most important thing is data. Data is our water. And, so, and the other is network. The other is environment, the value we create for our Alibaba users. So this is the data. That that's why you know, there's a conference. There are a lot of conferences in the future because Alibaba owns that much data. We know data, you have to be careful for the privacy. You have to have care for the data security. I, I saw one of the questions said, uh, hmm, how many data that you have not used yet? 99.99, we have not used it yet. Because we don't know how to use these data. This is something that we did eight years ago when we made the decision for Alibaba to become a data company. We say, we don't know how to make money out of the data. But we know in the future, no company, no country, no business can survive without data. So we have to focus on data. Today, if we cannot figure out the, solving the problem of, of privacy and security, 
that we should not use in data. The data is just to improve our business. And how, it's like when you conserve all the oils, what do you worry about? So we never worry about it. we have more data. And we will continue to making sure the data is good for society, for the globalization to be more inclusive, sustainable, and happy, and healthy. So that's it, that's something I want to say. We have data, we have a people, and, and great culture. And I will say the other things I'm happy about, the most powerful organization, the governing of the company. We are partnership driven. And our partnership are so different from the, the investors' partners and lawyers' partners. Joe probably can share next time about our partner system. So because the partner system culture, we guarantee that our company is a vision-driven strategy. We have to be vision-driven. We have to solve problems for the world. We have to create value for the customers. Uh, we have to be happy all the time. So that's it. That's what I want to say. And uh, hope to see you again next year. And last year, we have like 200 investors. This year, we're like close to 400. We hope we can have 10,000 investors <laughs> someday here. <laughs> and um, not, about data, not about the data on the screen, not about the, um, not about the, the results and uh, no, forecast like Maggie said. People in the future come here. We want to share how we do the business. Uh, how we go across the date from IT to DT, how we survive, what the experience. We want to be the company that can share experience with you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jack.